But I, I didn't feel that I could trust God. I didn't feel that, that he was real. Nobody took the time to share with me who God was. As I grew older, I began to spend less time going in there for those Sunday school meetings and spending more time going out fishing and hunting with Dad. Sunday morning became our morning to do it. Sunday morning, if we weren't in the woods, it meant let's get up and watch Harold Lloyd reruns on TV. And Norm's out here laughing right now. He remembers, but most of you probably have no clue who Harold Lloyd was. But this was a bonding experience for Dad and I. We'd get up simply to watch Harold Lloyd and Bugs Bunny and spend a little bit of time just staring at that little box, the box you're looking at right now. At that point, it wasn't doing anything for me. And I hope that what we bring to you tonight, that this will bless you and you will learn that God is real. See, as I grew older, I became extremely rebellious. I was always taught, take care of yourself. Look out for number one. Number one being me. Provide for your own security. Dad's a very strong man, a very independent man. And I grew up always wanting his affirmation. Wanting to hear Dad say, Son, I'm proud of you. Wanting to hear him say, I love you. It was, it was one thing to know it and be fairly sure that that was the truth, but that wasn't enough. I wanted to hear it. I wanted to feel it. And it wasn't coming. I spent a long time getting bitter with Dad. Even though he took me hunting and he took me fishing, he taught me more than anybody probably has ever taught me. As I became, grew into my teen years, I found myself getting bitter and getting separated from Dad. And I found myself trying to fill this emptiness with something else. First, it was easy. There were magazines laying around, pornography here and there picking that up, finding myself very quickly getting excited with that. Then, probably around the age of 14, finding alcohol. What a release. I can remember laying in a hospital bed. My sophomore year in high school, I was 15 years old. Homecoming was the night before. And I remember waking up in that hospital bed the next morning not having a clue how I got there. Calling a friend up when I got home and having that friend go, ah! because he'd been told that I wasn't breathing and he thought I was dead. I remember seeing the fear in mom of what was happening. And I can remember dad talking to me about it and saying, Son, you got to quit. Because if you don't quit, it's going to lead to worse. You're going to go into marijuana, and from there you're going to go into, and I looked at him and said, Dad, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to smoke dope. And I didn't hear a really good reason to quit. I just heard, you have to quit. So I did. I continued on in that lifestyle. And it wasn't long before I found myself standing at a party and somebody was passing around a joint. And the guys were saying, here, try this. And at first, I was, oh, well, nah, I think I'll pass this time. But when it came around again, it was kind of like, well, maybe I can take this and fake it. So I tried to pull a Bill Clinton. I'm going to just, I'll just take it in, but I won't inhale it. Well, my friends weren't going to have any part of that. So as I sucked it in, somebody just happened to haul off and hit me in the chest, and I just <laughs> filled my lungs with it. And from that point on, man, that was what I wanted. 
church league softball. I've been doing it for years. I've been playing the part of being a good guy for years. I've been going to these church league games, umpiring the game, listening to the guy pray before the game, and having none of it have an effect. All the while, I was just laughing and scoffing. Get done with the game, go light a joint. Whining affirmation. Whining to be loved. Whining to be cared for. And when I look back, I really feel badly about how I became towards my dad. Because I was so bitter, so angry with him. Because he wouldn't tell me he was proud of me. I could remember overhearing him back in high school telling the guys down at work the great game that his son played, the report card that his son brought home. But I didn't hear it being told to me. I can remember screaming at my mother when we were arguing about him. Why can't he just say it once to me? That was all I wanted, and it was just consuming me. But like I said, there wasn't just the drugs. It was all three of them together. It was drugs, sex, and alcohol. They ruled. Him. So and I, I started to listen to him. And he stood up. And he didn't give a salvation message. See, I'd been through a lot of salvation messages again in that year since coming to know Christ as my Savior. This gentleman, though, got up and he began to give a message on lordship. And he asked the question, is Jesus Christ your Lord? And before I could even say, well, of course, he said, no, I don't mean, is he your savior? Is he your Lord? And as he's talking, he seems to be looking me in the eyes. And he says, have you given him every part of your life? Does he have everything? And I was going like, well, hell, who are you? And he looked down there, and this room was full. He could have been looking at anybody. But he came to zero in on me, and he said, have you given him your lust? What about those, those magazines that you've got hidden? What about the books you like to read? What about the sex you don't want to let go of? And I was thinking, man, this dude's getting a little bit too close. You know, who tipped you off? And at the end of his message, he gave a different kind of an invitation. He said, now, somebody here needs to make Jesus Christ their Lord. And I figured, well, I can play this one off, man. I'm not about to admit to this one. Because he's been preaching to me, but I'm not going to let all these people know that, that I'm the dude. And I, I just sat there with my head down while he was leading the prayer. And he kept saying, there's someone here that Jesus Christ wants to be Lord over. And I just figured I'll keep my head down long enough. And he just kept on going. And finally I said, okay, it's me. And that night I realized that I didn't need just a savior to make sure I wasn't going to go to hell. I needed a Lord to take over and make me something new. And I gave Jesus Christ my life. And I made him Lord of my life. 